I'm going to talk today about aquifer storage and recovery in Texas and kind of look a little bit at the historical development of it, both in terms of projects and legislative uh, development, and then a little discussion of the status um, and where we might be going in the future. So basically, the talk outline is an introduction that kind of introduces who owns our source water, um, which we'll talk about, a more extended discussion on ASR legislative history and growth of ASR use in Texas, uh, briefly the current status, look at a potential future opportunity that's getting a lot of attention in Texas, and I'll finish up with unresolved issues. So as um, Graham and Tim pointed out, typically, in most cases, the source water that we're dealing with in ASR is surface water. And in Texas, surface water is owned by the state, and it's regulated by the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality under the doctrine of prior appropriation. So first in time, first in right. Although, as Graham, I think, pointed out, ground, groundwater, too, can be um, a source water and in fact is in Texas. Now, groundwater is different. Uh, it's privately owned. It's considered a private property right. And it's regulated by groundwater conservation districts, of which we have approximately 100, which can modify the underlying regulatory doctrine uh, for the state for groundwater, which is a rule of capture. So they can regulate use uh, and permit limits, well spacing, et cetera. So that's an important point to make because it's going to come up in our in our conversation today. So this slide shows operating ASR projects in Texas, but I'll I'll introduce it to say that ASR in Texas has been investigated since our major drought of the 50s, um, mostly in the Panhandle. But today there are currently three uh, projects that are operating in the state of Texas. And I'll start out west with the state of with uh, El Paso. Uh, they have a system where they're basically taking treated wastewater and recharging it into the Waco Bolson Aquifer. And it's a, it's been historically since '85 a hybrid ASR and MAR project. Uh, but their current method now is spreading basins, is their preferred method. So it's really an it, it's really a MAR project. If we move to the center of the state, the city of Kerrville. They get their water from the Guadalupe River. And as a drought mitigation strategy, they began doing um, taking surface water when sur surface water was available and they had a water right to it and recharging it into the lower Trinity aquifer back in 1993. And so moving into our last very severe drought in Texas in 2011, uh, they had approximately 2,500 acre feet stored and finally, we'll move down to San Antonio and the San Antonio water system and the Twin Oaks project, which began in 2004, um, probably our most famous project here. And this is the case where we're taking groundwater from the Edwards aquifer, which I don't have time to get into the reasons why, and recharging it into the Carrizo Wilcox aquifer. As of 2017, they have over 120,000 acre feet of uh, Edwards ground aquifer, groundwater stored in the Carrizo Wilcox aquifer. So an interesting thing about the three projects that are currently operating in Texas is that two of those were started and essentially authorized to operate prior to any formal statutory regulatory authority or rules. Um, and that precipitated a lawsuit. And it was because of the AS, Kerrville ASR project a lawsuit was filed against the predecessor agency to the uh, TCEQ, challenging the lack of formal statutory guidance to manage ASR. I, you don't really have a statutory authority to do that. And maybe more importantly, or more importantly for the state of Texas, that the permit, because it illegally modified state surface water to privately owned groundwater. So again, that dichotomy. So surface water owned by the state, groundwater a private property right. And they said, you don't have the authority to do that. That precipitated what was known as, what is known as House Bill 1989, passed in 1995. And that was really our first legislation addressing ASR regulation from permitting through the implementation. 
So with, um, with regulatory authority and with regulations on ASR, um, one would think that ASR would start to show up as a water management strategy. In, in Texas, we do state water planning every five years, and they basic, these plans basically look at future demand, resource availability, determine what the deficits are in water supply, and come up with strategies to meet those deficits. And that's where you would think ASR fits into the puzzle, and indeed it does now. And to the right is the, in the most current state water plan, 2017 state water plan. It's a regional process. There's actually 16 regional groups that, that the plans roll up to the state water plan. And other than the fact that it's a great way to do your, it's a great idea to do state water planning, but it's also important for people who have projects like an ASR project or a reservoir of any other type, that they get it into the state water plan so that they can have favorable Texas Water De Development Board financing of their water supply project, because as we all know, they can be quite costly. So this next slide is just making the case that there's certainly a need in the state of Texas that's documented for additional supply and storage. This is from the 2017 state water plan and the kind of red line going up from 2020 to 2070 is demand and the blue hatch line is existing supply. So the current 2017 plan projected that by 2070, we had us about an 8.9 million acre feet gap that has to be filled through some forms of water supply strategies, one of which could be ASR because um, traditional reservoirs are, are very hard to get permitted uh, these days. And this, this gap has been the same for the last four um, four water plans going back 20 years. Um, it's really not varied anywhere from about seven and a half million acre feet to about nine. So growth in, Tex growth in ASR in Texas from 1995 to 2015. Even though we have documented need for additional storage, which grows with every planning cycle in the state water plan, we weren't really seeing a commensurate growth in ASR as a storage strategy. Uh, the 2012 state water plan ASR was recommended as a state water strategy in three of 16 regions. So the question that a lot of water users and water providers in the state, including the state agencies and legislators were asking is, why was the adoption of ASR as a water supply strategy not significant following House Bill 1989? So, the initial study or, or the primary study to figure out the answer to that question was, was funded by the Texas Water Development Board in late 2008, where they, they put out a, an RFQ for a study to look basically at why is ASR not being used to the degree it could be used in the state. And the four bullets list what were the primary objectives of this study. But I'm really gonna focus on the last one today for lack of time, and that is, the report was very successful in identifying policy, technical, and legal changes that would facilitate and promote ASR use in Texas. And I'll also point out just a sidebar that uh, as of 2016, the Water Development Board has also been uh, putting out matching grants for feasibility and demonstration projects, which is also benefiting the state and the promotion of ASR. So with, with the report from the Water Development Board, um, someone needed to take that information and move forward, um, move that forward into legislation that could get put into statute and, and ultimately uh, help us be able to use ASR in, in, a, in a greater way in the state of Texas. And that, was, that uh, job was taken on by the Texas Water Conservation Association. It's basically an agency that promotes sound water policy in Texas. It's very similar to California's AQUA. Uh, and, and TWCA advocates priority water policies to the state and federal decision makers. It has diverse membership across all the user groups in the state of Texas. So, so you can actually develop um, uh, legislation or policy uh, by getting input from all the user groups. And in fact, that's what they do. Uh, the TWCA has seven panels, one of which is the groundwater panel that advise the TWCA board 
and support legislative activities. So prior to 2015, moving into that legislative session, the TWCA Groundwater Users Panel set up an ASR subcommittee uh, and basically they took the issues that were identified in the Water Development Board ASR study and um, by other potential ASR users who were, just, were on the Groundwater Users Panel and the ASR subcommittee to try to make improvements in legislation that would, would promote the use and make the use of ASR easier in the state of Texas. So, and that resulted in what's known as House Bill 655. It was passed in 2015. And priority issues addressed, there were several, so I'm gonna hit a couple of key ones. Um, one is established TCEQ as the sole regulatory authority in the state. So even though you could have a project in a groundwater conservation district, um, much of the authority normally that would go to a groundwater conservation district was brought to the TCEQ. So you had no duality there. Um, also, it clarified that no additional, this is really the critical one because most of the source water that goes in the ASR is surface water. For our state, it clarified that no additional surface water right amendment would be required to store appropriated surface water prior to beneficial use, so long as it's used in accordance with the terms of the surface water right. So that's a biggie. That was a very large one. And finally, and I think this is very critical too, it directed the TCEQ, TCEQ to permit ASR through both through general, individual, and permit by rule. And the key thing is, is the permit by rule, if you came in, if you come in and you meet the requirements and are not looking for a waiver of TCEQ's rules, uh, permit by rule allows you to permit by not going through a public process. So obviously that um, is very uh, beneficial. So what's happened since then? Um, known status of ASR projects in 2017. This slide comes from the Texas Water Development Board and, um, and it's already out of date, but as you can see on the table on the left part of the slide, there's upwards of 20 projects that were in development stage um, or running in the state of Texas in 2017. We know that number's increased significantly. So um, House Bill 655 passed in 2015 has had a dramatic impact impact on ASR in our state. Um, the current draft uh, City of Austin Integrated Water Supply Plan has ASR supplying up to 60,000 acre feet of water by 2040 for a city that's currently a surface water only uh, city. And if we look at the state 2017 State Water Management Plan, ASR was recommended as a water management strategy in 17 of the 16. Uh, seven of the 16 regions. So two more slides to go. I want to talk quickly about something that's getting quite a bit of attention in Texas and the very people who um, did all the hard work through the TWCA ASR subcommittee panel um, are some of the people driving this particular uh, effort. But many of you may remember uh, Hurricane Harvey last year that it hit Texas and in particular the Houston area down in South Texas, um, where basically we had unprecedented precipitation and flooding levels. This figure on the right showing all the red is basically showing all the streams in Harris County, which is the county Houston's in, that had record flood levels during Hurricane Harvey. So something that is has, has come of interest to the TWCA, legislators, uh, the Harris, Gally, Harris, Galveston, uh, Harris County Flood Control District, and others is how, how can we use ASR or MAR to help potentially control flood flows? So this is a very, it's definitely gonna be a topic of discussion in the next legislative session. And finally, I'll end with what I'll call unresolved issues. Um, because groundwater is a private property, right? Um, you know, some very interesting questions come up, like what property rights are required to inject and store water? And what rights does a project owner have to protect that stored water? Uh, questions such as who owns the pore space? Is it the owner of the surface estate, the groundwater estate, which in Texas can be severed, or the owner of the mineral estate? 
And at this point, we basic guidance is to get both the surface estate and the groundwater estate if they're severed. But even a more interesting concept is criminal trespass. If the stored water crosses a property line, could it be it can be considered trespass? And then finally, how does an owner protect their stored water? So um, the future in Texas, uh, obviously we need ASR and we need MAR. It's growing. I think we're going to see quite a speed up in development of, of additional projects. And there'll be some interesting issues with relate, related to um, private property. Groundwater is a private property, right? But um, I think that it's going to grow greatly in the state of Texas. And with that, I will close it off and thank you all for participation.